Hey, welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to be looking at one of the MemLab CTF challenges. This is a memory forensic CTF that was put together by Stuxnet999. I'll leave a link to the GitHub repository in the description below in case you want to check this out and download these files and try them out for yourself. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started on Lab 1. All right, so I'm over at the Lab 1 repository, and this lab is called Beginner's Luck. You can get to this lab through the main repository in the link in the description. We have a challenge description here, and it says, My sister's computer crashed. We were very fortunate to recover this memory dump. Your job is to get all her important files from the system. From what we remember, we suddenly saw a black window pop up with something being executed. When the crash happened, she was trying to draw something, and that's all we remember from the time of the crash. We also have a note here that says, This challenge is composed of three flags. So we know there are three flags that we need to hunt for in this memory dump. It also gives us a challenge file to download, which I've already downloaded and extracted. So let's head over to the terminal and take a look at it. So we have the 7-zip file, and we also have this .raw file, which is actually the memory dump that was obtained from this computer. So let's take a look at it. And all we get with our file command is just that this is a data file. And this is, a, this is typically the format that it's going to be in when you get a memory acquisition on some type of machine that you're trying to do some forensics on. Now the tool we're going to be using to analyze this memory dump is called Volatility. And I'm just going to open up the help menu real quick. And what this does is it has a lot of plugins that allow you to analyze all the artifacts that were collected at the runtime state of the system when this memory was acquired. And it really gives you visibility into what files were being executed, any system calls, handles, DLLs, and things like that. And this particular volatility version is version 2, and so you need to have Python 2 in order to get this installed and working properly in your system. And I'll also leave a link in the description on how to do that, because just downloading it and installing it from the GitHub repo has not been successful for me. There are some steps you have to take in order to get it installed properly, and volatility 3 does not necessarily work with all of these um, memory dumps for these CTFs, uh, as there are some plugins that are needed to get a little bit more information. Now, before we can actually get started on analyzing this, we need to get an idea of what the image profile is for this memory dump. So we'll give it the file of memory dump underscore lab one dot raw, and we're going to use the plugin image info. And what this will do, this only applies to volatility two. There's no need to get any image info in volatility three, but for the purposes of the CTF in these labs, we need to use volatility two. So we have to get the image info on this file and basically this will run and it will try to determine what operating system was installed on the machine that the image was acquired from and we looks like we have uh, potentially four results this is either a windows 2008 r2 server windows 7 sp1 windows 7 sp2 or windows 2008 r2 sp1 most likely since this was a user workstation it's going to be windows 7 sp1 x64 so 64 bit so let's go ahead and see if we can use that profile to get any information off of this memory acquisition. And we're just going to use the PS list plugin to see what processes uh, may have been running at this time. And as you can see, we get a lot of results here. So we're going to have to look through each, each of these processes and try to determine what may have been going on at the time and what data we can find that the user was doing when uh, this memory dump was taken and this computer crashed. So I'm going to go ahead and just clear the screen and I'm actually going to make this just a little bit smaller because some of this is going to be hard to read as this comes out in a tabular format and I want it to be able to display nicely so that as you go through this you can actually see what I'm seeing and see it in the proper format make it a little more readable. So let's go ahead and run our PS list once more just to see if that formats a little better. It's still a little bit tough so I'm going to make it a little smaller. That's better. All right, so let's run our PS list. And we can see all the processes that were running at the time this memory was acquired. We see, you know, several ordinary system processes like you would expect to see. Uh, we have the process IDs in this column. We have the process parent IDs in this column, the number of threads, handles, sessions, and the start time of these processes. So let's look through here. And we know from the description that MS Paint uh, was potentially running because they were trying to draw something. Also, it looks like 
We have winrar.exe, which is kind of interesting. Uh, there may be some kind of archive file that is present in this memory dump. And then dumpit.exe, this looks interesting, but this is most likely what the uh, CTF creator used to actually dump the memory from this machine, because this is a tool you can use to do that. There's other tools out there that are freely available. I know Magnet Forensics has one, for instance, but I'll, I'll leave that research up to you and let you try that out later. Now, another plugin we can use is called PS Scan. And what this will do that's different than PS List is this will actually look to see if there are any processes that are hidden that uh, may have been hidden by a rootkit that wouldn't necessarily show up in PS Scan or excuse me, in PS list. So this can be useful in those cases. I don't think we actually have that in this lab. So we're just going to keep going based on what we know from PS list. And now looking through these processes, once again, I also noticed that there's a cmd.exe process, which kind of stands out to me a little bit. So let's take a look and use the plugin cmd line and see what may have been present in uh, the memory at this time. And you get several options here that show like your system task. Uh, anytime you see a SVC host.exe, you should always see a dash K and then some type of service. Um, I'm not seeing anything that stands out with that just being by itself, but let's take a look through here and see if we can find anything interesting. Okay, so we see that we have a winrar.exe, and then we also have a file here, which is under C colon users, Alyssa Simpson. So that's most likely our user. Uh, documents and important.rar. So this may be an important file that we need to get. Uh, and this is going to be process ID 1512. So let's go ahead and try to dump that file and take a look at it. And one way we can do this is to use the file scan plugin. And what this will do is it will actually scan all the files that were present in the system at the time of this memory dump. And as you can see, there are a lot of files here. So I'm going to cancel this. And I'm actually going to just redirect it to a file called filescan.txt. That way we can search through that file at our own pace and not have to, you know, try and follow this entire huge list of files that were available in the system. So how would we actually dump this file? Well, let's take a look at the volatility help menu once again. And there's actually a plugin called dump files. And what dump files does is it extracts memory mapped and cached files. So this may be useful for getting that important dot rar. And since we know that this was output into our file scan dot text, we can actually use grip to search for important dot rar. And we can see that we have this important dot rar file. So what we need to do is copy the offset address here. And in order to use the dump files plugin, we're going to say dump files, and then we're going to give it a capital D to tell it what directory to put it in. We'll just put it here. So we're going to use a dot. And then for the offset, we need to use a capital Q and paste in the offset. And there's also a, an option for a dash N to just give it a file name. So let's go ahead and dump this file out and take a look at it. So now we have this file.none, the offset, important.rar.dat. And if we run file on this file, hmm, we get no files found. All right, so after a little bit of troubleshooting, I realized that I made a mistake and I said files instead of file. So if we run file on this file, it says that this is a rar archive. And so we know that this is the actual archive that we need to look at. And the way we can basically extract a RAR file in Linux is by using unrar and we have to give it the E option. There's no dash, it's just E and then the file name that we want to unrar. So let's run this here and we get a note that says the password is the NTLM hash in uppercase of Alyssa's account password. Okay, so we don't actually have that password yet. So let's go ahead and this is also flag three. So we've missed a couple flags so far. So let's go ahead and we'll use the hash dump option and we can dump the hash by using the hash dump plugin for volatility. And this will dump all the user hashes that are present in this memory dump. And the hash that we need is here and this is in uppercase. So really quickly, let's go ahead and fire up Python so we can get uh, the hash in uppercase. So we're just going to say our hash 
val equals the string and then we're going to say password equals hash val dot upper print password and we get our password here so let's try this out and if you don't know much about the upper method for python i've got a video that i'll put in a card up here it's a beginner strings method and we talk about the upper method as well as some others and things you can do with strings so let's go ahead and try to unrar this one more time and let's paste in that password and we extracted flag3.png and if we take a look we'll use i have gnome on flag3.png here's the third flag so let's go ahead and make a note of this we'll exit out of this and we'll just start up a little text editor real quick we'll call it flags.text all right so we have our third flag and now let's go ahead and see if we could find those other flags so we also remember from before we had our cmd line plugin that we were using so let's take a look at that again and a lot of times you know if there are commands that are run in the command line you want to be able to see that well with volatility 2 unlike volatility 3 we can do a cmd scan and this will return things that ooh, it looks like we have stage one okay so this will actually give us some information if anything was actually run in the command line and another way we can see that and get a little bit more information is by running the consoles plugin and what this will do is if anything was run in the command line again this only works with volatility too but if anything was run in the command line we should be able to see that so it looks like they ran stage three or excuse me stage one and we have this text here which looks like base 64. so i'm going to copy this and let's echo this string and to pipe it into base 64 tag d and hey we got another flag so flag this is stage this is the first stage and that's awesome so let's go ahead and make a note of that in our flags.txt and i also realized that on the third flag i made a mistake so let's go ahead and we've corrected that mistake i'm going to say flag one and paste that in and now we just need flag two so i initially put an e here instead of a three but the flag actually has a three in it so let's get out of here and now we'll start hunting for flag two all right so in order to deal with flag two we need to go back and take a look at our ps list so i'm just going to do a command search here and instead of looking at consoles let's look at ps list and if we recall from the lab description it said that the user was in the middle of drawing something and we saw that ms paint executable in the ps list before so let's uh, let's look for that again. And actually, we need to grep. All right, so we can see the process ID of mspaint.exe is 2424. So volatility also has a memory dump. And if we look at the CMD line once again, we can see that mspaint.exe doesn't have any arguments. So most likely this file wasn't saved. So we're going to have to actually do a memory dump to dump what was in this file so let's go back up here and we'll do mem dump and process id is going to be 2424 you specify that with the tag p option and we want to output this to this folder here so let's go ahead and do that memory dump all right so we have a 2424.dmp but in order for us to be able to open this up and look at it uh, we're going to have to copy that file and let's copy it to 2424.data that way it could be something that 2424.dmp to 2424.data we've got to give it a file name that way it could be something that we could open up with a program like GIMP so let's go ahead and open up GIMP and we're going to open and we have this 2424 dot data file so let's open that up and we need to say rgb alpha now i'm going to fast forward through this a little bit because this is going to take a little bit we're going to need to play with the offset and the width and the height in order to actually 
uh, try to render something that's useful. So I'm going to fast forward through this part. All right, so we get something here. It looks like uh, it looks like what may have been drawn on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and open this file, and we need to zoom in. And it looks like it's upside down. So let's go ahead and invert this image. We're going to go to transform and flip vertically. And it looks like we have our second flag here. It's flag, good boy, good girl. So we're going to take a note of that real quick. And that looks like our flag. So we're going to just go ahead and save this. And we will call that a win. And if you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment down below. Memory forensics is incredibly fascinating and incredibly difficult at the same time. Uh, but I hope you learned something from this challenge. And if you like it, again, like I said, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I'm trying to grow the channel. And thank you so much for watching.